Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers freedom of movement, reasonable suspicion, and identification laws, and is brought to us by Insanity's Edges channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On June 4th, 2021, an unidentified individual, who we will call Mr. Bill, was sitting in his vehicle in a residential neighborhood in East Tennessee while playing a GPS-based game. Corporal Gallo of the Blount County Sheriff's Department approached Mr. Bill's vehicle and began to question him about what he was doing. Mr. Bill informed Corporal Gallo that he was playing a game and asked him to turn on his body camera to capture the interaction. When Corporal Gallo responded that he had left his body cam at the office, Mr. Bill began to record the incident himself. We've had thefts in this community, okay? You can do that if you want to. Yes, yes sir. sir. Thank you. Be careful. <clears throat> We've had thefts in the community, okay? And you don't live here. Do you have a reasonable not, suspicion? The reasonable suspicion is that the possibility that you could be a thief in this area. I have explained to you what I'm doing. I want to know who I'm dealing with. You could be an axe murderer. Okay. So you, could you. you? Yeah. No, not in my uniform. Yes, I'm you at could. Work. No. No, no, no. There have been plenty of cases where officers have broken the law. Okay. Let's not pretend. Nobody not, is perfect. I'm not breaking the law. I'm asking you for your ID so you can show me your identity and I can walk away from here and give you your your uh identification right back to you and we'll be done. Are you issuing me a not right civil this citation? Second. No, not the second. Am I being detained or am I free to go? You're not being detained. You can leave if you want to, yes. Okay, thank you. But if I'm free to go, I'm free to stay. No, you're not free to stay. Corporal Gallo tells Mr. Bill that he is free to go, implying that he is not being detained, but that he is also not free to stay, essentially ordering Mr. Bill to leave the street. However, police officers cannot constitutionally require individuals to leave a public place in most circumstances. In the 1999 case of Chicago v. Morales, the U.S. Supreme Court held that a Chicago City ordinance prohibiting criminal street gang members from loitering in any public place violated the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment because, among other reasons, quote, it provides absolute discretion to police officers to decide what activities constitute loitering. In reaching this decision, a plurality of the court also recognized that, quote, as the United States recognizes, the freedom to loiter for innocent purposes is part of the liberty protected by the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. We have expressly identified this right to remove from one place to another, according to inclination, as an attribute of personal liberty protected by the Constitution. Indeed, it is apparent that an individual's decision to remain in a public place of his choice is as much a part of his liberty as the freedom of movement inside frontiers that is a part of our heritage, or the right to move to whatsoever place one's own inclination may direct. However, there are some instances where officers can order citizens to leave or disperse from public property. For example, Section 39-17-305 of the Tennessee Code states that, quote, A person commits an offense who, in a public place and with intent to cause public annoyance or alarm, refuses to obey an official order to disperse issued to maintain public safety in dangerous proximity to a fire, hazard, or other emergency. And Section 39-17-307 criminalizes intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly disobeying, quote, a reasonable request or order to move issued by a person known to be a law enforcement officer, a firefighter, or a person with authority to control the use of the premises to prevent obstruction of a highway or passageway, or maintain public safety by dispersing those gathered in dangerous proximity to a fire, riot, or other hazard. However, in this situation, Corporal Gallo seems to order Mr. Bill to leave simply because he does not want him to be there, which a court would almost certainly find was a violation of the 14th Amendment. Yes, I am. Because you're, is, you're this a is this a public street? You're, you're suspicious in this area. Okay. I, I don't you know have, if you get ready to you go have, to this lady's house and steal anything. You have approached or this lady's me. house or anything. You okay? have approached me. Do you want to leave? You have you approached me. you got one or two me. options. You can leave. You have approached me and I have explained what I am doing. I am playing a game on my phone. So That's you think I'm a liar. That's your excuse. So I'm a liar then. Let, you're, me, tell you, you, let you're, me tell you this, okay? You, you're saying I deal with 90% of the worst people, 90% of the time, 10% worse people, okay? Yes, yeah, I understand. Your sense of trust is gone completely. No, it's not there. But I just, I'm asking I you to, to obey the law. I'm, I'm asking you to obey the law. I am obeying the law. No, you are not. You do no. not have a reasonable, articulable have, yes, suspicion. I yes, I do. What is you your reasonable, in, articulable suspicion that I am about a, to commit, a, a, have committed, or will commit a crime? You are in an area. What is you your reasonable, inhabit, articulable suspicion okay? that I have committed, will commit, or about to commit a crime? No, sir, I'm not. 
stay there. Now you're in violation of traffic law on top of being in a neighborhood where you don't live. You which, live on Ridge Street, right? Which traffic law am I in violation of, sir? You're violation of registration right now. How so? Because this is only a white minivan and the tag comes back to a green car. Well, I can't, that's what we were issued, but if I'm in violation, please issue me a citation. Let me see your registration, proof of insurance, <sighs> and ID. Can I get in my thing? Yep, go ahead. All I want to do is I make sure you will. I you understand right. that, okay. but what does my ID have to do with making sure the area is okay. safe? Is the area any more safer now that you've identified me? Yes, and I'm going to tell you how. Okay. The, uh, the explanation that I'm fixing to give you is the reason why I do what I do. Okay, this area, and now that I have your ID, the area, if something does happen, something could happen, there's a possibility of an already known suspect now that was in the area prior to anything happening. So if something happens tonight or the next day or something like that, who's the strange people in the area? That would be you, okay? Corporal Gallo explains to Mr. Bill that he wanted to ID him as a potential suspect in case any criminal activity was to occur in the next couple of days. While it is not illegal to sit in your car while parked in a legal parking spot in a neighborhood where you don't live, it could be considered suspicious under certain circumstances. In the 2007 case of U.S. v. Wilson, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals held that because, quote, there is nothing about being seated in a car which is itself suspicious. The fact that a person is seated in a vehicle does not create a different test. Instead, it is, quote, simply a relevant consideration under the totality of the circumstances. It in no way changes the overarching constitutional analysis. The fundamental inquiry in determining whether evidence is admissible is whether, in light of the totality of the circumstances surrounding the seizure, it was reasonable for law enforcement personnel to proceed as they did. However, Corporal Gallo's argument that he needed to identify Mr. Bill based on the possibility of a future crime occurring does not seem to comport with the Terry Stop framework which allows officers to detain an individual on a reasonable suspicion that, quote, the individual is involved in criminal activity, or, quote, that criminal activity may be afoot. Casing a home for a later invasion would be considered criminal activity, but there is no objective evidence that this is what Mr. Bill was doing. In the 1979 case of Brown v. Texas, the Supreme Court held that the application of a Texas stop and ID statute when the police officers did not have reasonable suspicion of a crime was unconstitutional, stating that, quote, the Texas statute under which appellant was stopped and required to identify himself is designed to advance a weighty social objective in large metropolitan centers, prevention of crime. But even assuming that purpose is served to some degree by stopping and demanding identification from an individual without any specific basis for believing he is involved in criminal activity, the guarantees of the Fourth Amendment do not allow it. When such a stop is not based on objective criteria, the risk of arbitrary and abusive police practices exceeds tolerable limits. Applying this standard, a court would likely find that Corporal Gallo did not have sufficient evidence to reasonably suspect that Mr. Bill was engaging in criminal activity, particularly after Mr. Bill explained he was just playing a GPS game. We will come and talk to you. We will commit an, well, that's fine. An Why don't you come and talk to me when you have a suspicion of an actual crime? Sir, Sitting if, on the side of the can... road is not... Suspicion of a crime. Yes, this is a is. this is a road. What crime is is sitting on do a you public know anybody road? Anybody in this subdivision? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay. Why aren't you sitting in front of their house? Because I already sat in front of their house. I explained to you this is a GPS game. You okay. understand GPS? I know. I understand GPS, and I understand people doing all these games. But if you want to be hard with me as far as I'm not trying to be hard to I'm to, trying to I want you to you obey are. the law I am doing the law no that you are you as, as a corporal my duty bull as a what? corporal you I'm glad you, you know my job better than I do I don't know your job you better than you, you do on, but I do know up. the statute okay. for identify the I was statute. not committing you a know what? the statute for identifying yourself is anybody over the age of 18 has to have a document in their possession of who they are at all times. But I don't have to give it to you. When you are asked and requested Bull. by a by a officer, you, you do have unless to give it to you them. are issuing me a civil no, or a I criminal don't have to citation. Issue anything. Then this is I Nazi can ask Germany. For your, I can ask for your identification at and any you, given time. Sure, you can ask for it, but I'm not legally required to give it to you.
Corporal Gallo and Mr. Bill argue over when individuals are required to provide identification to a police officer, with Mr. Bill claiming he only needs to show ID if he is being issued a citation or civil warrant, and Corporal Gallo alleging that everyone over the age of 18 must carry identification at all times and present it to a police officer upon demand. Mr. Bill is referring to Section 7-3-505 of the Tennessee Code, which states that, quote, When any police or peace officer of a metropolitan government asks the violator for identification, for the purpose of issuing a citation or civil warrant to that person, the failure to produce or give such identification shall be grounds for the violator to be arrested. However, Section 55-50-351 of the Code also states that, quote, Every licensee shall have the licensee's license in immediate possession at all times when operating a motor vehicle, and shall display it upon demand of any officer or agent of the department or any police officer of the state, county, or municipality. It's important to note that officers can always request that an individual individual provide their identification consensually without violating the Constitution, but can only order an individual to provide ID under certain circumstances. For example, in the 2000 case of State v. Daniel, the Supreme Court of Tennessee explained that, quote, Courts have consistently held that the Fourth Amendment is not implicated and no seizure occurs when police approach an individual in a public place or in a parked car, ask questions, and request a search, so long as police do not convey a message that compliance with their requests is required. Nonetheless, under Tennessee law, operating a motor vehicle is not limited to driving it, as Section 55-50-10243 of the Tennessee Code defines an operator as any person who, quote, drives or is in actual physical control of a motor vehicle upon a highway. Therefore, the Supreme Court of Tennessee noted in the 1993 case of State v. Pulley, quote, A police officer may approach a car parked in a public place and ask for driver identification and proof of vehicle registration without any reasonable suspicion of illegal activity. While the court would likely find that Mr. Bill needed to present his driver's license to Corporal Gallo upon demand because he was in actual physical control of a motor vehicle, Corporal Gallo's contention that every adult in Tennessee must carry identification documents and present them upon an officer's request is completely unfounded. While drivers do need to carry a license with them when operating a vehicle, there is no general law that citizens must carry identification with them at all times. Additionally, outside the context of operating a motor vehicle, Tennessee law only allows officers to demand identification when issuing a citation or civil warrant, and officers in any state can only constitutionally order individuals to identify themselves if they have a reasonable suspicion that the individual is involved in criminal activity. I'm happy you feel that way. Have a good afternoon, sir. Thank you. You Please too. move on. If I'm free to go, I'm free to stay. I'm going to ask you to leave this are area, you asking? Please. Are you asking me or ordering me? I'm asking you to leave there. Are area. you asking me or ordering me? I'm asking you to leave there. If area. you are ordering me, I will leave. If you are asking me, I would stay. You I'd like to stay. To order you? I'm ordering you to leave there. Thank you very much. I will certainly leave. After Corporal Gallo ordered Mr. Bill to leave, Mr. Bill complied and drove away. That same day, he posted his footage of the incident on his YouTube channel, where he indicated that he will be following up with the Office of Professional Standards. It is unclear whether Mr. Bill will be pursuing any legal action regarding the incident. Overall, Corporal Gallo gets an F for displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of reasonable suspicion, blatantly misinterpreting the identification laws of his state, and for forcing Mr. Bill to leave a place that he was within his rights to be. Like many officers, Corporal Gallo built his determination of reasonable suspicion on assertions that do not comport with the court's modern understanding of reasonable suspicion. An unfamiliar presence in a location may be interpreted as somewhat suspicious, and it could very well warrant observation by a member of law enforcement. However, rarely does such conduct amount to the degree of suspicion necessary to detain and identify a citizen. If Corporal Gallo was concerned that Mr. Bill might be a threat to his community, then simply observing him from a distance would likely have rendered enough information to conclude that Mr. Bill was not involved in criminal activity. Simply existing in a public place is not indicative of criminal behavior, and neither is it associated with a location's past or future criminal activity. Corporal Gallo's assertion that Mr. Bill could be linked to past or future crimes that occurred in the area was both factually inaccurate and legally baseless, and he turned what could have been an opportunity to have a positive encounter with a member of the public into a full-scale detention and forced identification.
Mr. Bill gets an A+, for challenging the officer's assertions without becoming overly aggressive, maintaining a calm and collected demeanor throughout the interaction, and for peacefully complying with the officer's lawful orders. Mr. Bill was well within his rights to park his vehicle on a public street and play games without being disturbed, and he initially offered a legitimate explanation of his actions to the officer without compromising his rights. It wasn't until Corporal Gallo mentioned the registration violation that Mr. Bill was willing to surrender his identification, and at that point, he was legally obligated to. Mr. Bill did a fantastic job balancing his civil liberties with the lawful demands of the officers, and he demonstrated a thorough understanding of the First, Fourth, and Fourteenth Amendments. As Mr. Bill explained in his original upload, he does not proclaim to be a First Amendment auditor, which makes his assertive demeanor and authoritative dialogue that much more impressive. I commend Mr. Bill for staying calm under pressure and for setting himself up for a good case later in the courtroom. Be sure to give your support to the Insanity's Edge YouTube channel. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for more police interaction content.